If we bring together Foundation, SwiftUI and Combine, we can add a timer to our app to add a little bit of pressure to the user. Now a simple implementation of this doesn't take much work, but also has a tiny bug that requires some extra work to fix. For our first pass to the timer, we're gonna create two new properties. The timer itself, which will fire once a second, and a time remaining property, from which we'll subtract one every time the timer fires. This allows to show how many seconds remain in the current app run, which should give the user a gentle incentive to speed up. So let's start by adding two new properties to our content view up here. We could say at state private var time remaining equals 100. And then let timer be a new timer publishing every one second on the main run loop in the common modes. And I'll auto connect that. So we're giving the user 100 seconds to start. And we'll start a timer that fires once a second on the main thread. Now whenever this timer fires, we want to subtract one from our time remaining property. So it counts downwards. Now we could try and do some date mathematics here by storing a start date and showing the difference between that and the current date, but there really is no need as you'll see. We're gonna add a new on receive modifier to the outermost Z stack in our view hierarchy here in content view. I'll say on receive timer, give me the time coming in. Then if our time remaining is greater than zero, time remaining minus equals one. So we've got a trivial condition here, just to make sure we never stray into negative numbers. So this starts our timer at 100, and makes it count down to zero, but of course we've got to actually display it somehow. This is as simple as adding another text view to our layout, this time with a darker background color to make sure it's clearly visible. To do this, we'll go inside the uh, VStack around our cards, this one here, and we will uh, use this to show our time remaining. We'll say simply here, we have uh, the text, uh, time is time remaining, like that. There we go, it's quite small right now. Uh, in a font of large title, looking better, with a foreground style of white, add a bit of padding. Let's do horizontal padding of 20, and then we'll do uh, vertical padding of five. That's neatly balanced. Then I'll add a bit of background to this. I'm going to use uh, dot black dot opacity 0.75. And then a gentle clip shape of capsule, like that. So now we have a nice clear time remaining counting down as you can see all the way down. If you want to, you can go ahead and uh, run the app view and see how it looks. Uh, so hopefully we'll see. Boom, our timer. We have 98, 97, 96. And I'm going to press Shift Command H to go to the home screen. So we're on, let's do 90. Boom. Home screen now. Um, here on the home screen, doing stuff, whatever. And then I'm thinking, well, okay, I've, I've done my thing, check my email, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and return back to my app, pressing the flash cell icon here on the home screen. And you'll see our time was 88 seconds, not what we are on, on, on 90. So what you'll find is the timer shows some kind of value two to maybe three seconds lower than we had in the app previously. The timer will run for a few seconds in the background and then pause automatically until the app comes back. We can do better than this. We can detect when our app moves to the background or the foreground and pause or restart our timer appropriately. First, we're gonna add two new properties to store whether the app is currently active. We'll say up here, at environment, scene phase, var scene phase. And then at state, private var is active, is true. Now we have two, because the environment value is gonna tell us, is the app active or inactive in terms of its visibility? But we'll also consider the app inactive if the player's gone through their full deck of flashcards. It'll be active from a scene phase point of view, but we don't have the timer ticking anymore because the cards are all gone. 
And so we're gonna now add an on change modifier that will track that scene phase changing down here. Here's on receive. We'll say on change of that scene phase, if the scene phase is now equal to active, we'll do is active is true. Otherwise, is active is false, like that. So setting that thing true or false based on what we had before with one equal sign Hudson. There we go. And now we can modify our on receive modifier here. So it exits immediately if is active is false. So I'll say simply guard is active else return. So when active is false, just bail out straight away. And with that small change, the time will automatically pause when the app moves to the background. So we're on 96 home screen. Count, wait as long as you want, whatever you want to. And then back into Flashzilla, the exact time we left off. We no longer lose any mystery seconds.